Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. For those of you who have been around for numerous years, you might realize that this is my classic setup. So this is where it all began. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the studio for some of these in-person videos. It should be a lot of fun. And what are we going to be getting into? Well, we're actually going to be getting into a lot of new stuff specifically with branching and loops, control flow specifically, and how to take all these concepts and apply them to a real world application. So we're going to be creating a very simple application that takes these concepts and uses them to make something pretty cool. We're going to make a little bit of a game. I mean, it's going to be console based, so it's not going to be like Call of Duty or anything, but it's going to be pretty sweet. So I'm pretty excited and I hope by applying these concepts, it helps you learn them a little bit better. So what are we gonna be talking about in this video? We're gonna be starting our discussion on control flow. But first I wanted to say a special thank you to our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Now if you've been watching these videos, you might be saying, what, Rad Studio? I thought your sponsor was C++ Builder. Well, these are two very similar products. They're both from Embarcadero. C++ Builder allows you to build C++ applications, but Rad Studio is a little bit more of a beefed out version where you can develop in C++, Delphi or Delphi and you get a lot of plugins, and there goes the dogs barking. Anyways, with this IDE, you can build cross-platform apps and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Lots of capabilities for working with databases, IoT, Bluetooth, modern technology. Very, very useful, especially if you want to build user interfaces because they have drag and drop capabilities that are cross-platform. So super sexy application, go check it out. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. And now let's get into control flow. This is one of the coolest topics in C++ and not just C++ because these concepts are going to apply to basically any programming language. I'll try not to keep it too general though. I'll give you some key tips that I have to tell you guys about C++ and we'll keep the concepts generally thin and we'll go into the hands-on stuff really soon. So in these next upcoming videos, we're going to go over the main control flow structures and just get them down and then we're going to apply those to an application. So where do we start? Well, there are two main categories of things you need to know. Well, these are both within the bigger category of control flow. Now within control flow, we have what you could call branching, I guess, and then what you could call looping. So branching is where you do conditions and you will branch your application to do different things based on the result. Looping is similar, but what it's going to do is it's actually going to repeat the same thing and basically loop through a section of code a certain number of times. And these are basically the fundamental pieces to make more complex applications, right? Because putting some input and doing a calculation and getting some output, that's cool. But what we really wanna do is we wanna make an application that will be able to run indefinitely, will be able to basically interact with the application. And that's only made possible with control flow statements such as branches and loops. Now, when it comes to branching, the main things you guys need to know about are if statements and switch statements. And we're gonna be talking about both of these. Now when it comes to looping, the ones you should know about are while loops, for loops, and do while loops. So we're gonna talk about two main branching techniques and three looping techniques. Those will be the concepts and then we'll take those and we'll apply those to an application. So where are we gonna start? We're gonna start with branching. So this video is going to be about if statements and switch statements. Very brief, we'll get into the concept here, and then in the next video, we'll go through coding an if statement, and then we'll go into switches. So, very simple, the way this works is you say if, this is a keyword, so you type out if, and then you put parentheses. And here you put some expression. And I'll explain what I mean there in a second. Then you put curly braces. So you open the curly braces, and you close the curly braces. Just to make sure I'm in screen here, I think I am. <laughs> Now here is where you put your code. So what's going to happen is this expression will evaluate to true or false. So this is gonna be true or false. If it's true, this code inside of these curly braces will execute. If it's false, it'll jump over that cur those curly braces and go to the line down here. So this is basically a condition. If this is true, we'll execute this. Otherwise, we'll skip it. Now there's also a variation with an else. So you could say else, put some more curly braces down here. I think I'm running out of room there. <laughs> and what the else will do is you can give it a section of code and it will evaluate if it's false. So you basically have two options here. You could do it without the else and then if it's true, it'll do something. If it's false, it'll do nothing. Or you can use the if else and then if it's true, it'll do something. If it's false, it'll do something else. 
So it's totally up to you whichever one you want to use. There's a third variation known as the if else if. And what that's going to look like is this. So we first have that first if, and then we put our code in here. Then what we can do is we could say else if, and put another expression, and then we'll put more code here. And then lastly, we can have that optional else on here. So this is the structure for an if else if. That else if section, you can have multiple of them if you want. That else section is optional, so you can get rid of it, but you can only have one else. So if this is all new to you, maybe it's really confusing, it's very surreal, but once we go into the code in the next video, it'll be very simple. But basically, this is just the structure. You can think of this as branching. So we're going in our code, we're going straight. We hit this structure here, and we have to branch in three different ways, essentially. The first way is if this expression is true, then we hit this code. The other way is if this is false, but this is true, then we go that way. And then lastly, if neither of those are true, then we'll go the else path. So that is how we can branch in three ways. Now, what do I mean by this expression here? Well, this is going to be some sequence of code that will evaluate to true or false. So this is known as a Boolean expression, Boolean meaning it evaluates to true or false. So for example, we could do something like this. Age is equal to 17. This is only going to evaluate as true if a, some variable named age has the value 17. So this is an operator that will see if these two things are equal. So this is a very simple expression, and we're going to be getting into more complex expressions as we go, but this is just a very simple example. So if you had some variable age, let's say int age, and you can get that value from user input, so you could say, hey, what's your age? But just for example, I'm gonna assign it a value, let's say it's 17, then we take this and put it inside of this expression here. We say age is equal to 17. Well, this will evaluate as true, and then this code will be executed, whatever we put right here. So that is how an if, else, if, else works. <laughs> Very complicated name, but you can just call it an if statement in general. So you don't always have to say if, else, if, else, just say, hey, we're working with if statements. All right, so how is this different than a switch statement? Because a switch statement also allows us to branch in our application, but it's a little bit different. Let's talk about it. So a switch looks something like this. You say switch, and then you also have parentheses, but instead of putting some expression in here, you're just going to put a variable. So what we could do is we could put h. And then inside of the curly braces, you're going to have what are known as cases. So you could say case 17 and put a colon, not a semicolon, and then our code will go right here. And then when you're done with the case, you can indicate that by putting the break keyword. So that's how we say we're done. You can also have other cases. So for example, we could say if your age is 18, we wanna do something else. So we have different code, and then we have break. And then there might be a situation where we want to grab all ages besides 17 and 18, and with that you use what's known as a default. So this is kind of like the catch-all. This is equivalent to else in the if-else. So we can say default, throw some code in there, and then we could also put break. So this is a switch statement. The syntax can be a little bit new if you're new to this stuff, if you've never seen a switch before. Now the thing I have to say about a switch is that it can't do anything that an if statement cannot do. So if you're overwhelmed with things to learn, don't worry about the switch for right now. It's nothing revolutionary. It's actually much more limited than an if statement. How exactly is it limited? Well, for one, this variable age, it has to be an integral type. So it has to be like an integer or a long or some integral type. That really makes the switch not very useful because we're often going to be using other types and switches can only use integral types. That's not the case in some other languages, so if you're using a more modern language besides C++, you could probably use strings, but in C++, that's not the case. So only integral types. That reduces the usefulness of this a lot. The other thing, once we get into comparison operators, you can't really do those inside of a switch. So you can't do something like age is less than 17. That's not a possibility. This is only exact values. So 17, 18. So it's not for ranges. So when would you want to use a switch with all of these limitations? Usually you'll see switch when there are a few options for a particular variable. So let's say you have some kind of menu and you ask the user to select an option and the options are one, two, and three. 
that would be a perfect ideal time to use a switch because you can break, you can branch very easily based on those different values. You also have this break keyword. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more when we go hands-on with the switch statement, which will be here in a couple videos. So thank you guys. Hopefully that was a good introduction to branching inside of C++. Lots of general concepts, so if you go to any other programming languages, this is probably gonna be about the same with the exception of this needing to be an integral type. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing as that really helps out the channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.